Okay, welcome to Intro to Philosophy uh, Summer Online. I'm Dr. Dwayne Armitage. I don't see anybody in the chat yet, so what I'm going to do is go through uh, the exam. Oh, somebody came in. Uh, and I'll just keep going in. Type your questions on the side there, and I'll answer them uh, as best I can. So the questions on the exam are randomized. Um, but I'll just go through it in any random order. This will be saved, and you can watch it later. Uh, okay. So, Nietzsche, an atheist by instinct, argues in favor of a Darwinian worldview where power reigns over re reason, which leads Nietzsche inevitably to argue in favor of objective morality, purpose, and truth in the world. So what I'm asking there is, does Nietzsche believe in objective truth and morality? Okay. Remember, uh, he critiques the idea of objective truth and morality. What he thinks is that all morality is merely a fiction. It's subjective, not objective. And he's a, he's a moral relativist. He's a nihilist. And he doesn't believe in any kind of truth. Okay? Okay. Uh, well, this question is, I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of questions on this one. There is no truth. Now, remember, when I'm asking this, there's a YouTube video dedicated to this, a little, little lecture. If you say there is no truth... How can that be true? It, it affirms what it denies. It asserts what it denies. So if there is no truth, that can't be true, right? So if, if you are, it doesn't matter if you mean for Nietzsche or just in general, how can you mark true on a question where it says there is no truth? How can that be true, right? Uh, it would have to be false as would be everything would be false. I'm going to have to probably answer this question a lot tonight. Um, hello, I see two people in here. You ask me questions on the side if you like. If not, I'm just going to go through the exam. Uh, and these are in no uh, particular order because the questions are randomized. For Nietzsche, if humans possess a why, they can endure any how. And thus the death of God is the collapse of the highest value in Western culture presents modern humans with a peculiar crisis of meaning since the why no longer finds an answer. Right. And that's exactly what Nietzsche uh, thinks is the death of God uh, uh, is not just the disbelief or growing disbelief in the Judeo-Christian God, but it also is the crisis of meaning, which he calls nihilism. Okay. Uh, hi, Emily. Uh, how long should short answers be roughly? Um, I'd say it depends on the question. Let me look at the short answer questions I gave you here because they're different every time. Uh, oh, I'm sorry about that. The box looks very small there. Um, I'd say that the one, what is the main difference between Nietzsche and Plato's philosophy with regard to truth? That could be a little bit longer, but just make sure you answer the question. I've seen people do well answering them very briefly uh, and also very shortly. However, I will say this. The longer you go, the less likely it is that you're going to make a mistake. Uh, better to better to err on the side of longer. Um, the other question is explain Plato's theory of the forms. Uh, I'd say three to five sentences for that one. Which position do you find more convincing thus far, Plato or Nietzsche's? I'm looking for a little bit more on that one. Um, so I would say uh, three to five sentences, but for some of them, for the ones that are a little bit more open-ended, the more you write, the better. I hope that answers your question. Um, but I'm not looking for long essays or anything like that, okay? But just make sure you thoroughly explain it, and especially the one that asks for your opinion. Okay, I've been going through these here. Um, yeah, so which position do you find more convincing thus far, Plato or Nietzsche's? Why? Please explain. Um, I'm looking for a little bit more there, but I think you can probably do that in at least in as little as five sentences, although I wouldn't risk it. I'd probably say a little bit more, uh, but it's possible. Uh, so now I'm just going to continue on going through the true or false if I don't see. Uh, oh, okay. Great. Great. USA, it's me, Gregory. Okay. Hi. Okay. All right. So uh, true or false for Nietzsche, the Superman, the Ubermensch, as a creator of value is nevertheless still tethered to revenge and resent. Remember, Nietzsche's idea of the Superman uh, is the the one being who does one of two things, right? He can create or she can create meaning and value by putting it on the world on a meaningless landscape. So the overcoming of nihilism takes place in the character of the Ubermensch. Also, uh, the Ubermensch is the one who is free from revenge and resentment, free from slave morality, which was Judeo-Christianity, according to Nietzsche, because Nietzsche thinks all of morality, all of Western culture and morality is built upon weakness and therefore resentment, okay? So briefly explain Plato's theory of the forms or ideas. Again, you could probably do that in three to five sentences as long as you do it thoroughly. 
uh, Plato believed in the forms and thus the form of the beautiful. Therefore, he thought that beauty was relative in the and in the eye of the beholder. Remember, Plato thinks the forms are objective, extra mental entities, not subject, but objective. So the beautiful, like truth, etc., uh, are not in the eye of the beholder, but they're objective, not subjective. This other question is like the other one: there is no truth for Nietzsche, since there is no truth. The statement there there is no truth is true. Same kind of idea with that other question. How can you purport, how can you claim anything to be true when you've just denied truth, right? So how could there is no truth be true if there is no truth? Everything would have to be false, which is in fact what Nietzsche says. Hi, this is uh, this is for uh, my uh, students on, online. Um, So, for Nietzsche, the ethic of concern for victims originates in the resentment of what he calls slave morality or the morality of the weak. Remember, Nietzsche thinks that the fundamental hermeneutic of, uh, of how to interpret the world, hermeneutic just means interpretation, is power, right? And when you have power, power bifurcates into strength and weakness. And Nietzsche thinks Western culture is founded on the weakness of the mob or the weakness of the crowd, which he calls slave morality, okay? And out of that weakness uh, comes hatred. And this, this feigning of a concern for victims, which really isn't a concern for victims for Nietzsche, it's uh, hatred uh, for the uh, victimizers or perceived victimizers who are the winners. So for Nietzsche, the ethic of concern for, victim, for victims originates in the resentment of what he calls slave morality, the morality of the weak. Okay, so uh, what I'm asking there is, does the ethic of concern for victims arise out of resentment? And is that what he calls slave morality? So Nietzsche, although an atheist, was not a nihilist since he believed you could put meaning onto the world. Now, remember, that's putting meaning onto the world doesn't mean you're not a nihilist, right? The Ubermensch puts meaning onto the world and overcomes the experience of nihilism. But metaphysical nihilism is simply the idea that nothing means anything. So just because you think you can put um, meaning onto the world doesn't mean you're not a nihilist. Nietzsche was, in fact, um, uh, such... Okay, let's see. Nietzsche seeks through his method of the hermeneutics of suspicion, which simply means interpreting the world suspiciously. Uh, he seeks through that method of interpreting the world suspiciously to unearth the conditions of power or the conditions for the possibility behind Western culture and its values. Um, so remember, Nietzsche is a hermeneutic of suspicion. And what is he doing when he does that? He's saying whatever presents itself to us under the uh, aspect or, or appearance of value in Western culture really has power behind it, or the, the instinct for life. Platonism is a philosophical system of metaphysics, which affirms the existence of another world where objective intellectual objects exist. That one seems pretty straightforward. Uh, relativism, the philosophic position most closely associated with Plato and Nietzsche, argues that there are indeed objective truths and values. So the question is, uh, is that what relativism is? And uh, is that most associated with both Plato and Nietzsche? That's what I'm asking there. What's the main difference between Nietzsche's philosophy and Plato's philosophy with regard to truth? I'm looking for the question of objectivity there. Okay. Okay. In the end, Nietzsche's philosophy, in particular, his philosophic conception of the eternal return of the same argues for the value of affirming life and overcoming revenge such that I can say without resentment, without resentment, what does not kill me makes me stronger. Okay. Remember the idea of the eternal return is to imagine that your life is on repeat excuse, <coughs> over and over and over again, uh, ad infinitum. And so you would have to imagine that you'd have to live your life exactly over and over and over and over again, like Bill Murray and Groundhog Day. And Nietzsche thinks that that is precisely how you affirm life and overcome revenge. And uh, <clears throat> so what would it mean to say, what does not kill me makes me stronger? It would mean to unconditionally affirm all of life, including suffering, and to transmute suffering into some kind of heightened state of will to power. 
Uh, and then finally, I'm asking, Plato was a relativist since he believed in the forms. Is this true or not? Because the forms are a response to relativism. Okay. Let's see. Uh, there's three people here. So I just went through the exam. You'll be able to play that back. Are there any particular questions that you have? There's four people now. If there's any questions, you can just type them on the side there. I'll be here. Uh, I usually give it about 10 minutes after no one asks me a question. So I'll go at least till 830. Um, uh, but if there's any questions, just let me know. Just type it on the side. So what I just did was go through the exam uh, through every question and just give a little gloss or a little uh, comment. And I'm happy to do that again. And don't be afraid of asking the same question over and over again. Um, I hope this helps. Or any question about the course in general. Okay. I wish I could see who is here. I, I can only see three things here. Um, okay. I really can't see until you ask a question, I guess. Oh, wait. Maybe I can see here. Let me see if I could say anything else about the exam. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Remember, if there's anything false in any of these questions, it's false, okay, for the true or false. And I'm looking for about, I don't know, at least five sentences, three to five sentences for the short answer. The longer you write, the better. And this will be online. Uh, <laughs> Hello. This is a review for one of my intro to philosophy classes online for the summer. Um, I don't know if anybody actually watching this is in that class, but if you are, type on the side your questions. One says, home mate. I guess that means hello, hello. I forgot what I was saying too. Oh, this will be online for you to review. I don't think the questions come online, so I'll have to, I'll read them out. And, uh, or the questions don't save, I don't think, so I will, uh, read them out and repeat them as you ask them. So I'll be here till 8.30. Um, I'm just going to get up for a second, turn the air conditioning on. Um, okay, so if there's any other questions, I, I'm happy to answer with regard to the course, the schedule, anything about any, any of the... Uh, questions. I just went through the entire exam. That'll be available uh, right when this is done. I'll just put it right online. Hello. Hi. Oh, sure. You can ask me that. Uh, Danny, and nobody else is asking me anything. I'll, I'll, I'll privilege... Um, uh, sure, I'll privilege the questions for the class uh, first, but nobody's asking any questions, so. Hi, Phil. So I haven't had any, any particular questions on the class since I went through the exam, so I'll probably just edit this out if there's any, if there's not any, uh, any further questions. Uh, we'll go till about 8.30. It's 8.14 now. Okay. Hi, Phil. Uh, yeah, we're, this is for this is just a review for one of my online classes. Uh, thanks for uh, watching on the channel. I'm happy to answer any questions because nobody in the class is asking me any questions. Uh, if there has anything to do with the